Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. Recently, I served some friends of mine some roasted lamb, and with the lamb, I, I served roasted mixed vegetables, something I do often, and they liked the vegetables so much, they asked me, have you ever done the vegetables in a video? And I realized, no, I haven't. My videos are almost always the main course. So today, because I'm seriously lacking in this area, I thought I would show you my recipe for doing my roasted mixed vegetables. These can go with almost any meat. I would serve them with roast lamb, roast beef, roast pork, roast turkey. If I were cooking barbecue, uh, tri-tip rather, on the barbecue, I would even serve these with that. They're very easy. If you're going to be doing a roast and having the oven on for any length of time anyways, put the vegetables in there. I'm going to kind of fancy these up a little bit so they will be a little more than just simply plain roasted vegetables. I want to make them good. This is typically how I make them for my friends. I think they're going to be good. So let's get into the ingredients that I'm using for my roasted mixed vegetables. I have here a butternut squash. I'm only going to be using half of this because I don't have a lot of everything else. And then I have one yam, one carrot. This is a regular russet potato. I've got to use this up. This is a portobello mushroom. I bought this for another video only so that I could do my rant against portobello mushrooms. This is a cremino mushroom. The little white mushrooms you find in the grocery store that are like $3 a pound, those are creminis. They're baby these mushrooms. If they allow them to grow up to full size, they turn into this. This is a cremino. Farmers used to throw these away because nobody would buy them. And then some genius marketing guy came up with the idea of giving it a fancy name. Let's call it a portobello. And suddenly the farmer's trance trash rather became gourmet so that's where this came from i normally don't buy portobellos this is the only one i've ever bought in my life if i have to buy fancy mushrooms i usually get shiitakes i like the texture and flavor of those better if i have not mentioned it already this is an onion yes i did i'm going to be using part of that extra virgin olive oil salt and pepper to taste then I have some oregano and I have some dried basil. These are basil leaves that I dried myself. I bought a bunch of basil and had too much of it, so I ended up drying it. I'm going to flake that in there. In the past, I've typically only used oregano and pepper. Ah, I'm going to throw the basil in there because I've got it. One more thing to fancy it up. So those are the vegetables that I'm using for making my roasted mixed vegetables. Butternut squash has a really tough skin on it that has to be peeled off for this. Um, I'm going to be using a knife that I rarely ever use. That's why I keep it in this leather sheath that I made myself, by the way. I do all kinds of things, folks. Not that this isn't a good knife, but I've got a good 9-inch chef's knife that I prefer to use. This is an 8-inch. This is so difficult to work with. I don't want a big unwieldy knife as well, so I figure a smaller knife is going to be safer to work with. I'm going to cut that in half. I'll save this and roast that later. And then the trick is to get this peeled as safely as possible. You want a good flat surface to peel this on. And then use your knife to just peel the skin off. like so. I've done this with a potato peeler. It is a lot of work. I have a really good ceramic potato peeler. I'm afraid to use that on this for fear that I'll crack that ceramic blade. So just using a good sharp knife and I do keep this knife. I keep all my knives really sharp. Just finishing up here. Okay, so there's my squash peeled. That's done. This you can save if you want. Put it in a plastic bag, put it in the freezer, and save this for making vegetable stock. That's what I'm going to do because I do make a lot of stock. I can even throw this if I wanted to in some chicken stock and make kind of like a chicken vegetable stock. All right, so now that this is peeled, cut that top off more trim for the freezer. 
going to cut this down once down the middle. I try to work with as much flat surface as possible because this is a very hard vegetable and if I should slip with the knife trying to work with this I could cut myself seriously. Okay, cut those across. Come on. It's sticky too. Cut through these. I'm going to cut these kind of small. So these will probably cook in maybe 45 minutes to an hour. You can cut these pretty large if you want. Sometimes I cut them into big one inch chunks and they can take as much as like an hour and a half to really cook to be fully soft. But I'm going to do these in like half inch chunks. All right, and having done that, it's just a matter of cutting through this and cubing it. So I've got the rest of this to do, and then we'll move on to one of the other vegetables. Okay, for the carrot, you want to do about the same size as the cubes. Once you get up to a certain point where it starts to get too thick, then you can cut it in half. Take a few more pieces off and then quarter it. And get that into cubes. The idea is to balance your textures, your sizes as much as possible. And by the way, I wouldn't use a real watery vegetable like eggplant or zucchini because those are going to cook rather quickly whereas these heartier root vegetables these thicker more dense vegetables these cook longer you could do things like broccoli cauliflower zucchini eggplant and mix those as well but i would do those real quickly like maybe at the most 20 to 30 minutes so now i have to um peel my yam and I'll be ready to chop that up. I peeled and chopped my yam. I'm doing my white potato now. White potato has a lot of water in it so I'm not going to cut this as small as I did the other vegetables because I think this will cook more quickly. All right, that's all done into my bowl. Now I'm ready to start seasoning these. So there they are, all nicely chopped up. Again, potatoes a little bit larger. There's my oregano, my basil leaves. Just gonna break these up in there. Oh, I can smell that. A little bit on the counter. Don't want to waste any of that. Some fresh ground black pepper and some salt. All right, and then glug in some extra virgin olive oil, probably a good quarter to a third of a cup. You don't want them swimming in oil. You just want to get them nicely coated. And then roll up your sleeves and just get in there with your fingers and start turning. Get everything all mixed up. Get that seasoning all distributed. This is usually where I get a lot of it on the counter and I'm not doing that today. Maybe I'm finally learning. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna wash my hands and then get these ready to go into the oven. What I've got here is a rectangular baking dish, roughly nine inches by 13 inches by two inches deep. I'm just gonna arrange my vegetables in there. Not a lot of oil swimming in the bottom, which is good. I want enough to coat my vegetables, but as I mentioned, not enough to be swimming in the vegetables. Okay. Now, I've got my oven heating to 375 degrees. I'm going to roast these uncovered. You could cover them with foil if you're 
afraid of them drying out too much. I'm going to roast them uncovered because I want a little bit of browning on the surface for about 30 minutes and then I'll start checking them to see if they're tender or not. And then if I need to, I'll add more time. Sometimes I go over an hour with the larger cuts that I have. I'm, I'm estimating these will be done in about 45 minutes. I changed my mind and decided to work with that whole onion when I saw all those vegetables filling that rectangular dish. Changing over to my nine inch now, this is my workhorse knife. I have peeled and halved these onions. I'm not gonna chop these up. I'm just gonna cut these into crescents like so. This one is just coming apart. There, that's got it. And I'm gonna leave these as is because I'm gonna break these up in the pan as I saute these. I'm going to saute these until they're well caramelized and that's going to take about a good 20 minutes working on a medium, medium low, right down to a low heat as I need to. You don't want to rush caramelized onions. You can even caramelize these in the oven. You can cook them for like 15 minutes in a skillet, move them to a baking dish and then bake them in the oven for a while. I do it all in my in my large skillet. I've got some Butter melting in this pan. I'm going to add some olive oil. This is extra virgin olive oil again. Get that well heated up. That's just about warm enough. I look to see that foam start to settle down. That bubbling is the water in the butter boiling off. You could use, if you wanted, clarified butter, and that would get rid of that. All right. That is just settling down now, so my onions go in. Make sure I get them all in there. Now I'm gonna reduce my heat to medium. I had it on high. And again, you don't wanna rush this. Take your time with caramelizing onions. If you want to speed up this early part of the cooking, you can put a lid on this pan. That'll hold in some of the moisture and it'll steam those onions and they'll get tender and translucent more quickly. Then you can burn off that or boil off that moisture later on. Okay, so this is gonna take me a while. My vegetables have about 20 minutes to go for this first. 30 minutes, so we'll see if I can get these timed together to be done at the same time, or close to the same time. So there are my onions after 15 minutes. They're not darkly caramelized, but they are good enough for what I want, so I'm gonna take these out of the pan, and then I'll be ready to start my mushrooms. My mushrooms, I know, are gonna be like sponges. They're gonna soak up a lot of fat. So I'm going to add more oil and butter to this pan, even though I have butter left in there from the onions, because they don't, they don't absorb a lot of fat. And there goes the farmer's trash. I, I mean, the gourmet portobello. Now these do have a more concentrated fam uh, flavor than the little creminis because they're older and because they open up, they dry out a little bit and that concentrates the flavor. Look at how that's absorbed that fat. But that's okay. That's gonna give me some flavor. I'm gonna cook these only for about three minutes. Two or three minutes. Okay, here are my roasted vegetables out of the oven. I'm looking at my camera. Things have gotten real yellow all of a sudden. Maybe I have to adjust my white balance again. Okay, um, these roasted for 45 minutes at 375 degrees. I started to get a little bit of browning on my potatoes. The texture of these is what I would call al dente. 
It's not mushy soft, but it's obviously not raw. It's got a little bit of crispness to it. It's a little al dente, so I actually prefer this the way they, they are. I said I was going to fancy this up. That's what the portobello's and the caramelized onions are for. And I just sprinkle this lightly over the top. You could, if you wanted to, even garnish these with some breadcrumbs and then put them under the broiler for a little bit of browning. I'm not too keen on that idea, but I do love caramelized onions and I think the mushrooms, whether they're the farmer's trash or not, are going to be good in there. Okay, so now roasted mixed vegetables that have been fancied up a little bit. Let me wash my hands and then I want to see how these taste. Okay, I'm going to taste. Well, that looks much better. I adjusted the white balance. I'm going to taste my vegetables here. These will look like they're going to be delicious. Oh. The mushrooms just, they add just that little bit of extra now for my caramelized onion. Oh, that's delicious. I could make a meal out of this, even though this is a side dish. You could. I mean, if you're vegetarian, you might want to enjoy this as a meal. Roasted mixed vegetables, they're delicious. You can eat them as is or put them in the oven and serve them with a roast turkey. We've got Thanksgiving coming up soon roast lamb. A lot of different roasted meats would be good with these roasted mixed vegetables. So excuse me, I'm going to go eat my vegetables. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.